Hi, in this video we'll take a look at how to reverse engineer an API using Postman. For this video, you should already have a good idea of how APIs work. And if you're not familiar with sending requests and inspecting responses in Postman, check out one of our other videos first. I'll drop the links in the description. We'll walk through importing a single request into Postman, capturing a stream of requests that are coming from a web browser, a mobile device, or an Electron app, and see what that looks like in the Postman app. Let's get started. Make sure you have a Postman account and you're logged in. In the top left, click on the orange New button and tab over to Templates. Let's find a template called Reverse Engineering an API, and then pull the collection into our instance of Postman. We can see it in our sidebar here. This collection contains all the examples that we'll be walking through. Click the flyout next to the collection name and View in Web. Now we're in our browser. This is web documentation that corresponds to our sample collection. If you're following along in real time, feel free to pause the video when you want to to try it out on your own, or dig a little bit deeper in the documentation here. OK, I'm going to tab over to Reddit. I'm logged in and will be upvoting a post. Before we do that, I'm going to open Chrome DevTools by right-clicking and selecting Inspect. If you've never seen this, don't worry. Let's just tab over to Network. This is going to show all the client requests that are being sent as I surf around the web, click on things, and so on. I'm going to find something that I like and give it an upvote. <clears throat> Under the Network tab, let's find a request. We can inspect it here in DevTools, but I want to pull it into Postman so I can poke at it some more. Go ahead and right-click on this request and select Copy, Copy as Curl. Now let's go back to Postman. In the top left, click Import and tab over to Paste Raw Text. Paste your curl request here and click Import. There we go. Under the request headers, we can see how this Reddit API authenticates a request with a bearer token, along with a bunch of other metadata being sent with this request. In the body of this post request, we can see the ID of this Reddit element, like a post or a comment. And since we upvoted it, here's the value being sent to the Reddit server. If we had imported a post request for a downvote, we might expect to see something different here. So that's how you import a single request into Postman so that you can visualize the individual components and tweak the stuff that you're sending to your API. All right, now let's intercept a stream of requests. The first thing we'll do is turn on the Postman built-in proxy. At the very top, we'll click on this satellite icon to capture API requests with Postman. Let's leave the port as our default 5555 and leave the target as history, so that we'll pipe all of our requests to the History tab in the sidebar. We won't add a filter this time, but on the second tab, we could limit our capture to requests from specific domains with specific contents or certain methods. Let's leave it as it is and go back to Connection and hit Connect. <clears throat> there we go. We see our confirmation. We turn on the Postman proxy, essentially turn the Postman app into a proxy server, and now Postman is ready to capture all of our client requests that will be routed to port 5555. The next step is to configure a client to route traffic through this Postman proxy, listening on port 5555. Our client could be a web browser, a mobile device, or an Electron app like VS Code. So that we know where our Postman proxy is located in the local network, we can point our client traffic to the right place. Let's get the private IP of our machine that's running Postman. On a Mac, go to System Preferences, Network, and select your Wi-Fi or network connection. On the right, let's copy our private IP address or jot it down somewhere. All right, let's configure our first client. Let's try a web browser like Chrome. In Chrome, click these three dots in the top right and select Settings. Scroll down, select Advanced. Scroll down again, open Proxy Settings, and we're back at our System Preferences for Network under the Advanced Proxies tab. So go ahead and select HTTP, paste your IP address from the previous step here, and add port 5555. Go ahead and do the same for HTTPS, then click OK and Apply. Now your browser's HTTP and HTTPS traffic will be routed through our Postman proxy on port 5555. Let's move Postman over to one side, make sure we can see the history. Remember, this is where we'll be displaying our stream of requests. I'll put Chrome on the right so we can see them both side by side. 
All right, let's try a site like Hacker Noon. You can see a bunch of requests being recorded and displayed in the history. You can dig deeper into each of these requests or save them to a collection to share with a teammate. Currently, the Postman built-in proxy captures HTTP traffic, but has trouble with, with HTTPS websites that have HSTS enabled. HTTP strict transport security. It's an additional layer of security, which is good for the website. It's great, actually, but it makes it harder for Postman to simulate the client app and capture that traffic. I'll drop a link to the Postman roadmap in the description below so you can keep tabs on HTTPS support, which is in development right now. And that's it. We learned how to import a single request in a Postman. We use Postman as a proxy to capture a stream of requests. We tried it out with a web browser, and the process is very similar whether you're capturing traffic from a mobile device or even an Electron app like VS Code. I'll drop a link in the description below to some additional resources if you want to try that out too. If you're doing cool stuff with the Postman proxy, let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, check out some of our others.